Hello, uh, thanks for checking out my video today. Um, I'm going to do a complete video on my V40 motherboard project. Um, there are other videos that I did along the way as I was developing this. Um, but today I'd like to do kind of a full overview. So this will be a bit longer. I will cover stuff I've covered before. So I guess you kind of skip through if there's parts that are boring or you already understand. Um, as of now, I don't plan to change the layout of the motherboard. I plan to stick with this motherboard for a while. If I do change the layout, I'll probably go with something. Uh, it'll be a full new design. And uh, I may actually just go with a, a motherboard that fits in an ISA case and go from there. But for now, this is my project. Uh, I'll show you the components we've got. We've got the motherboard, ISA adapter for a breadboard so you can prototype the ribbon cables we got our keyboard controller and i did not build this i just bought this it's a usb for the hard drive and our speaker and over here i have my rom burner i use this with a raspberry pi to upload the code to the rom and uh so this is kind of separate uh, it uses the spi bus uh, there's some videos on this out there already go over the components so the motherboard, we've, we've got our V40, which uh, as many people already know, that's uh, it's an 8088, the V20, which was built by NEC. So the V20 is in the core. It will operate 186 code. And the V40 just has all the peripherals integrated. So the uh, interrupt controller, the system timer, there's a DMA controller. Now, I can't say for sure that that is compatible with the, uh, what is the 82 uh five seven or three seven dma controller but it is a dma gives dma access uh so that's all embedded in the chip uh, and then that comes down for our isa bus and this bus is pc compatible all the pins are hooked up including the uh, 12 volts um you can see over here we've got two crystals this one is for the processor it's a 16 megahertz crystal uh Processor has the internal clock and it divides that in half so it's running at 8 megahertz. So you can see that is the uh, dash 8 V40 there. I do have some dash 20s. Uh, they don't work so well. I'm not sure if there's a problem with the chip or if my peripheral chips are actually too slow for it. I, I'm not sure. But the, the 8 megahertz works just fine, uh, pretty flawlessly. Down here, I do have a, it's a 1. 14.31818 crystal. That is the crystal that was used in the original IBM PC. And I use this with the, I have a clock here. This is not a clock for the processor, but I use this clock to, there's a clock input pin for the uh, system timer. And you can either use the internal clock on the V40 or an external clock, which I'm using here. And this is so that we have the proper timing on the uh, the system timer and on the uh, speaker. Now, I've used the internal clock with the speaker, and it ends up being a little bit higher pitched. So you could forego this here and just use the internal, but this is just to be more realistic. Like, I've ran some games that you can't see it on the screen because I don't have a screen, but they audio play, and it plays perfectly pitched with this one, this one here, it's a higher pitch. So down here, you can see we've got a, uh, it's clock divider, the 74LS74, and that's all built to go into here to get the proper dividing on the, uh, on that timer. Over here, I have a, uh, it's an LS20, and it is used for the uh, DMA, with the DMA controller and it provides the AEN pin on the ISA bus. Prior to this, so there's no AEN pin on the V40, where there's an AEN pin on the uh, DMA controller on the original PC, so I kind of had to invent one. So this takes all the acknowledge lines off the DMA access, and if any of them are acknowledged, then it, then it enables the, D, uh, the AEN pin. There's a jumper here, because built into the V40, you have a serial port and it's connected through the DRQ3. So that's your DMA 
three, but it's also multiplexed with the uh, serial port. So you can take this jumper out and use the serial port. The reason being is you don't want your AEN pin to sit and fluctuate for serial communication. So with serial communications, you take that out. I haven't tried the serial port, but it's there. You do have a pin here, which is used with the uh, serial port. It's like a serial ready, but it also is, uh, it's got a couple other things on there. You'll have to look at the manual, to, but it's that's used with the serial port. I just made it available. Now off the V40, it's like the 8088, where your data bus and your address bus are on the same pin, so you have to come out here. And I've got the uh, this transceiver here, the, uh, the 245, the, uh, this one's an HC, but the LS245. And then you've got some latches here. I think the original used the uh, LS373. I use a 573. The only difference I can tell is these are in parallel, where the 373, they're all over. It's like one's in, one's out, one's in, one's out. So this is, it's just a straight across parallel latch. So I've got my address zero through seven, and these are the upper, so it would be 16 through 19 latched up here. The middle ones, eight through 15, do not need to be latched, just as on the 8088, you don't need to be latched. Now, just side note, if you're using a V50, which has a 16-bit data bus, then you would have to latch those lines. But just as in the past, um, it's cheaper to and fewer components to use the 8-bit data bus. So over here, we've got some uh, LS-139s. The speaker is through this 139. I've had some questions on that. I only use that because it was available on the board. It's for the logic to decode uh, or to enable and disable the speaker. It's through here. But this is used also with decoding the RAM and the ROM. Um, and then these 138s here, they're used for decoding as well for IO and MEM. We have uh, another 139 here. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's these are all just for decoding. And I have an LSO4 here, and that's just for inverting lines that I needed to invert on the board. And then one more 139. So down here, we've got our, our 512K of RAM. Now I've had a question. Uh, one guy asked about adding 64K or having 64K, which is totally doable. But in an effort to save on components, once again, just 512, because if you added another, what is 128K, that's, um, I think, two more chips because they don't come. It comes in two chips, not one, to get that 128, and you'd also have to have more logic, which is going to just overall increase the cost and size. And 512 is plenty of RAM for these older type projects. I do have 32K of RAM here, and this is, and you can see uh, up here I put the... Uh, addresses so this will make it easy for your programming address zero and then this one starts at address f with four zeros after it so that's your kind of i use it with the bios um and then this is at f8 with three zeros after it and that's your bios and then you're able to just pop that out plug it in the programmer update and pop it back in so like if if we had a finished bios and you weren't going to be prototyping a lot, then you could actually just put a regular ordinary socket there. Um, but like I say, I developed this to be a project prototyping type board, and that's why that's built that way. Over here, I have another latch I added. I originally started with a 8255, and this is at port 61. It says that right above the chip. Let's try to get some focus on that. And on the PC, Port 61 was used to like enable your speaker, a few other things. Um, and I labeled next to the pin what they do to kind of help it make it easy if you program. And so like you got speaker go, speaker enable. So zero and one. And then down here looks like, I want to say pin three is uh, channel check enable. So that's actually your non-maskable interrupt enable. And that... Now there was another address as well, I think it was like in that 80 or 70 range that was also used to enable the non, so one's a channel check enable, one's a non-maskable, but on this board that enables everything, channel check slash non-maskable interrupt. Over here we've got our two pin headers and these were designed to be used with this. 
Top one here is port 60, so your keyboard port. And the bottom one here is port E0. And that is your, I use that for my hard drive. And I picked E0, it seemed like an available port. And I had already decoded for 60, so it was already available. And I didn't have to add more components to decode that. Um, the interrupt on here is a low, not a high. So it runs to that LSO4 to invert that. Um, over here we've got our power connection. This is a, the old style power connector. If you have a modern power supply, you can get an adapter. I think I ordered one four months ago. I'm still waiting for it to show up off of eBay. Um, I'm sure there's better sources you can get an adapter. I think I paid three bucks for it. So if you have an ATX power supply, you can just get an adapter. Um, I'm using a power supply out of like an old 386 or something. I've got my bracket here, so this can mount onto a back plane. And uh, up here we've got a reset and power light, just lets you know it's on. So and then we got our resistors. All these resistors, they're for various things. I think I've tied some to the uh, IL read, memory read, write lines, kind of to pull them up or down. Just to, those ones I don't know if I needed, but I did. The D, DRQ lines are pulled up or down. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but they're pulled so that they're not active. And that way, if you enable it on the software side, you don't start getting these phantom requests. Um, and that's what most of these resistors are for. There's kind of a pull up, pull down type stuff. So that, that kind of covers the board. Um, like I said, I don't plan to make any major changes from here. This runs very stable. Um, to quick get into some code there's like white wait cycles that you can enable on the processor and i've had to enable all the wait cycles to run stable if you eliminate all the wait cycles then uh and where that is is when it does a memory read memory write you if you know about the there's like four clock, clock clicks to uh read and write to memory or an io and in the t wait which is after like three it adds one, two, or three cycles. That's in the data sheet. And I've added some, and I think that's because these might be a little bit slow. Um, just, just a touch slow. And by adding those weights, like, and it will run if you take them out, but it, it, it's not quite as stable. So um, that's kind of the only thing that I'm on a code side to mention right now um, for the motherboard. And you can run this without a hard drive. You can run it without a keyboard. You can run it with just ROM if you'd like. And it's a complete working board. So this is what I use for prototyping. It's a ISA adapter. Plugs right into a breadboard. Um, the pins are all labeled. Um, right there, you can see them. And so this allows you to plug this right into a breadboard and work on your projects right off of it. The one thing to remember though, is you're working right with the system bus and the system address bus. These are not buffered. You'd have to add buffers compared to like other projects where you could just like connect a pin directly to it. So that's just something to keep in mind. All the DMA lines are there. Your interrupt pins are there minus, uh, what is it? Zero and one because zero is the timer and one is the keyboard, but it's fully there eight bit. So plug that in over here. This is my prototyping board. Got that plugged in. So now we'll go on to the uh, additional parts I've made. So I was, and I've talked about this in other videos, I wanted to use this for the keyboard. Um, but I went ahead and made this because the human interface code for the USB, you have to write an external firmware for this. I'm not familiar with that. And this was a lot easier to build than to continue learning about this. So if somebody wants to figure this one out for the keyboard, that'd be great. Um, I used the, uh, this Winbond uh, 83C42. This is a hardware keyboard controller. So reading up on it, it was designed, I think in the nineties to replace the 8042, kind of like for 386s, I think it talked about in the manual. But the 8042 is a microcontroller and they use software to run the keyboard where supposedly this uses hardware and it runs a lot quicker. 
um, on this project, that's probably not going to make a lot of difference on the speed, but it's, so I made a contained unit. Uh, you could use the clock off the board if this was embedded, but this one's separate. So I've got my crystal on there, the peripheral chips, and then the pin header is identical to this pin header here. And then we've got our PS2 port there. And this, this whole project is built and it, with the intent to be off the shelf. And I think everything here is made and currently in production, except for the processor, which they are still available though. So everything here is new or could be new and uh, in production. And well, maybe not the, this may not be in production. I bought these, I think I got some old stock, but the uh, thing to note about this, I added a jumper so you can go higher low on the interrupt line because this requires a low where this would normally require a high, but I designed the port for a low interrupt. And so I made this kind of be universal. So you could go higher or low on that interrupt pin. Just depends on your application or what project you're working on. So. Anyway, we've got our, our uh, USB host here and that is used for the hard drive. So the hard drive plugs in here, keyboard plugs into there. Oh, sorry, there might have been a little blip in the video there. I had to pause for a second. Um, so I'm going to keep going. We're going to show how I put this together. So we got our ribbon cables. Uh, hopefully this doesn't get too all blurry and weird. I'll plug it in the card first. So you just got to make sure you plug this in the right way. I can't say I've ever plugged it in backwards. So I don't know what will happen if you do. Same with this one here. The uh, red line usually indicates the uh, pin one on the headers. So I'll plug those in. Same thing here. All right, got those plugged in. You see. Keyboard controller, USB, and we'll take our speaker, and it is labeled, so this is like a 5 volt, a ground, and this is the speaker pin. You know, and I think I mentioned this in another video, is, uh, well, the uh, speaker pin is on the ground, or on the, and not the 5 volt, I kind of would have thought it was on the 5 volt, but I left this pin out when I build the board, I, I take that pin out, because some speakers on here will have a plug in that slot. And I think that's just so you don't plug them in backwards, but so I take that out. Uh, this resistor here, I don't think I mentioned, is for the speaker. It's a 33 ohm, and that's right out of the manual. So take it over here. When you hook up your power, the, uh, the black wires are uh, your ground, and they go together. And this is pretty standard on any of these old motherboard, or the old motherboard socket is you put the two grounds together. So we'll put those in. Actually going pretty smooth. It's got those in. And then I'm going to plug this whole thing into the socket here. And it doesn't look like it disturbed any of the wires. Hopefully this will boot right up. We'll plug into our, our USB. Now this is currently formatted with a 10 megabyte partition with DOS. I think in my BIOS, if you go too big, it won't load. So like if you did like a 500 megabyte, it just, I don't think I did the formulas in there to handle that. I think over 32 megabyte is kind of the limit there for now. We'll get that updated over time. I definitely would like this to be able to handle a full size drive. And then we've got that and Plug in our keyboard, try and do this all one handed. Yeah, I'll have to pause for a second. All right, got that plugged in. Sorry, I had to use two hands. So, full motherboard, keyboard, hard drive, and this is our current screen. So, Theoretically, so this PC compatible build, theoretically it should work with an off the shelf video card, but I don't have it in my BIOS to do that. Um, if somebody's got the knowledge on that, they would, and, and one available, I don't exactly have video cards available to test. 
it should boot on a video card with the proper code. So that's your full computer. You think back in the old days, IB, by, uh, sorry, IBM 5150, that's about all you'd have. You'd have your drive, you'd have your keyboard, you have your motherboard, and a display. That was it. And obviously not that type of hard drive. This chip here is just an extra ROM that I use. I swap them back and forth when I'm prototyping. So I'll turn it on here. We'll give it a test. So you can see it fired right up. And trust me, when I was paused, I did not have to tinker with anything to get this thing to work. I did test it, though, just to make sure. I didn't want to have it crash when uh, trying to do the test. Um, so you're starting MS-DOS. You see that 40AA? That's actually a report from the keyboard controller saying that it's on and working. The AA is what you want to see, that 4-0. I've seen different numbers there. Uh, the second digit needs to be a 0. The first digit being a 4 isn't necessarily bad. But typically, you'll see a 00 AA on the keyboard. Anyway, we're at the prompt here, and I've talked about this before. I'm trying to get that at a good angle. I don't have a, a adjustable resistor on this. I just have a standard resistor on the screen there, so it's a one set contrast. I can see it just fine, but in the screen here, it's not showing up too well. You can see the C colon, and then there's that uh, symbol. So that's supposed to be a backslash. But on this screen, that ASCII character code for a backslash shows up being that uh, character there. I think somebody commented that it's a, uh, it's for like the Chinese symbol for their money. I wouldn't even know how to say it. It's like uh, yen or something like that. Or that's Japanese. But anyway, enough about that. So you got our, our prompt here. Um, like I said, this is read only right now on the hard drive. It's just a matter of sitting down and writing the code. So I could do like a make directory or something and it would write it back and make the directory or copy a file. And that's just a matter of just writing the code. Um, so here's our keyboard. Um, I'm gonna show you. Uh, so I just pushed space bar. And this is currently just giving you the scan code. So I definitely need to write the keyboard driver, handler, whatever you wanna call it. And you can see there was the key down, key up. And so I just need to go in and it just basically take that key down, key up, and interpret it, and then put those characters in the keyboard buffer, and then DOS will take it from there. I've got enough familiarity with programming with that DOS with my other projects that once I add that to the keyboard buffer and tell it that there's a key in there, DOS will take off. So you could do like, you know, you could start typing commands in this. I have booted this up with, um, uh, in the BIOS, like a, or sorry, not in the BIOS, the auto-exec, to load like a game like Paratrooper or Digger or Alley Cat. And sure enough, right here on the speaker, it'll play the theme song to Alley Cat or whatever flawlessly. Obviously, there's no screen, so you can't see it being played, but it, it plays it just fine. So we know the speaker works. We know the hard drive works. We know the keyboard works. And this screen. Um, this screen, the code is in the BIOS. Uh, Maybe one day I'll sit down and actually pu publish my schematics. But I just have some decoders here to decode the address. And then uh, I use a parallel port there. Uh, it's an 8255. This might be the next 71055. And I use it in port. I use it in mode 2 to communicate with the screen. So none of this is saved in memory on the board. It is on the screen itself. And what it does is it'll... Uh, it just on port b you got port a port b port c and it finagles some lines on port b to use the read write to here you can't plug this right into the the bus the system bus it has to have this buffer from my experience i'm able to work with the uh, bus so i might make that available i just need to sit down and do that so that other people could replicate this screen but really this is just for testing and i would like to go with an off-the-shelf screen so Anyway, I think that covers the whole project as a whole. Um, I'm going to make this available on eBay, the whole complete system board tested. So if, if you don't want to solder your own up, I do have the blank boards available. But if you don't want to solder one up, I'll make one available soon. I mean, it'll be a little bit spendy, but it'll be available. I'll, I'll probably include the motherboard, uh, these two hosts, some ribbon cables for you, a speaker, the breadboard adapter, and um, I'll throw in the uh, EEPROM writer as well. Um, so watch for that on eBay if you're interested in buying a complete working system. And then over time, either you can develop your own BIOS or, like I say, just watch and 
as I develop over time, you'll be able to upload that new BIOS to your uh, motherboard. So, anyway, uh, thanks for checking it out. That should cover it for today.